uncertainties in life, God offers to us more hope. Hello everyone, I'm excited that you are here today at this small group lesson study. I'm Pastor Moody and I'm going to be dealing with the subject of spiritual gifts. Uh, years ago, my cousin called me and she said to me, uh, what is my purpose in life? And I said to her that you can always find your purpose in life in the Word of God, the Holy Bible. So as we look today at spiritual gifts, I have discovered that spiritual gifts takes you to another level in life. Not that you're just living, but living with the purpose of operating in your anointed gift. Oh, you have great facilitators today. Study this lesson on spiritual gifts and I will see you soon. Hello everyone, I pray and hope that you've enjoyed your lesson on spiritual gifts. I shared with you that I will see you soon and I am standing here for a review and I hold in my hand the Word of God. I want to invite you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and just let's look at a few verses in the Word of God. You may have it on your iPhone or your iPad, but make sure you turn with me to the Bible app of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 1 says this, now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. That's our topic. That's our theme. Spiritual gifts. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1 says they don't want the brethren to be ignorant based on spiritual gifts. I believe wholeheartedly that the spiritual gifts that are laid out for us in the Word of God helps equip and empower us to be better individuals for the glory of God. Let's just read a few more verses. I want to share with you that verse 4 says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Can I say that again? It says, There are diversity of gifts, but of the same Spirit. Then and look at verse 5, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Then I want to share with you that the Bible says in verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I just mentioned to you that when we understand our spiritual gifts and know what they are, it blesses not only us, but it blesses others. Spiritual gifts is indeed a gift from God. I know sometimes people give me a gift and I don't use the gift. Uh, but when I understand the gift God has given me, I want to use that gift and I see other people blessed by that gift. Let's continue, friends, to look at the Word of God. The Bible says here in verse 8, For to one is given the word of wisdom, through the Spirit to another the word of knowledge, through the same Spirit. Then verse 9 says, To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Let's continue to look at the word of God. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the, the discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Friends, let's look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, but one and the same spirit work all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. I want to share with you that when I open the word of God, I am able to see spiritual gifts. Then I'm just crazy enough to believe that God has given me a gift and you a gift to work for his glory. Let's take a deeper look at spiritual gifts. 
When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the entire chapter shares with you the beauty of spiritual gifts, and that's your assignment to continue to read and study. We're going to continue to look at spiritual. Spiritual comes from a Greek word, ton numekaton, and it is separated from worldly pleasures. There are spiritual things that bring glory and honor to God, and then there are worldly things, lustful things, that bring glory and honor to the devil. God has given us spiritual gifts that brings glory and honor to him. When you look at gifts, it's also the word grace. His grace is sufficient for us so that we can be a blessing to others. So I want to share with you that I read a word that said manifestation. When I look at manifestation, it is an open display of the power of God. So when we say that we're going to church or we're going to operate in our anointing or in our spiritual gift, God is making visible an open display of his power through you and me. Friends, isn't that great to know that God has called you with a purpose and a plan for your life? So many people are wondering what has God called them to do? I suggest that when we all understand our spiritual gifts, we will operate in the anointing under the influence of the Holy Spirit and others will see an open display of the power of God. But you have to understand what your gift is. I have a list here and it is 20 beautiful things on the list of spiritual gifts. The first one is wisdom. The second one is knowledge. The third one is administration. The fourth one is apostleship. The fifth one is shepherding. The sixth one is faith. The seventh one is miracles. The eighth one is prophecy. The ninth one is leadership. And the tenth one is giving. The eleventh one is compassion. The twelfth one is healing. The thirteenth one is discernment. The fourteenth one is teaching. And the fifteenth one is helping. The sixteenth one is evangelism. The seventeenth one is servanthood. The eighteenth one is exhortation. The 19th one is tongues, and the 20th one is interpretation of tongues. Now, I've shared with you 20 spiritual gifts. I'm sure that you have one of these gifts. You can process in your mind, and you can say, how do I know that I have this gift or that gift? Maybe it would help if we define the gifts. I always share with people that we must study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Just don't read it, but let's see if we can break it down just a little bit. When we look at the gift of administration, it is defined as the gift of organizing human and material resources for the work of Christ. Apostleship, the gift of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to other cultures and foreign people. Compassion, showing the love of Christ meeting the needs of the people. There are so many people all around us that are in need. Are we compassionate? Let's take a look at a few more. There is the gift of discernment, the ability to be able to separate truth and error, to know what is right and to know what is wrong. Then maybe you've heard the term evangelism. It is to spread the gospel or good news. You know, so many people share gossip. Oh my goodness, when gossip is there, man, everybody knows. But do people know the gospel, the good news, the truth that will set you free and you will be free indeed? Evangelism is sharing the good news, the gospel. And you want to be able to exhort the word of God, exhortation, being able to encourage people and giving them hope and letting them know that they can make it in this cruel world because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. There are many spiritual gifts. Let's look at just a few more. There's the gift of faith. The faith is the gift that empowers an individual 
to hold fast to your convictions regardless of your circumstances. What is faith? Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you must keep the faith. Then there is the gift of giving. So many people give and give and give and you would never know that they're giving. They're giving of their time. They're giving of their talents. Uh, it may be a phone call. It may be a text message. It may be encouraging someone or sharing a prayer with them. This is really just relevant ministry meeting the needs of the people. Then there is the ministry and the gift of healing. This is the gift of channeling God's healing power to those who are afflicted in body, mind, and spirit. There is power, my friends, in prayer, and God hears and he answers prayer, and he loves to heal. Mental healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. We have gifts. We just have to tap into the gift giver who is Jesus Christ. Then there is the gift of helping. Helping and supporting your brothers and sisters. Knowledge, the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowing the truth of God through the study of the word of God. Then you want to imply the word of God. So many people have knowledge, but they're not implying the word of God. Then there is the gift of leadership, being able to orchestrate and bring everybody together to work for the glory of God. I believe in this concept of team. Together, everyone achieves more. It's leadership, working together to build up the body of Christ and tearing down the devil's kingdom. Then there is the gift of miracles. Have you seen a miracle lately? I was looking at the news the other day and a car caught on fire and they struggled to get the man out of the car and they got the man out of the car and they went and they hosed the car down and they looked inside the car and the only thing that was left was the Holy Bible. It was not burned at all. It was a miracle. I believe that God still performs miracles, uh, miracles that he saved the man, miracle that he left the people his sign, the word of God. Then my friends, there is prophecy studying to show thyself approved. You have all type of false prophets, but then there is biblical prophecy that we must study and understand the fulfillment and the soon coming of our loving Lord Jesus Christ. Then there is servanthood, the gift of providing for the spiritual and the material needs of others without condition. So many people, I'll do this for you if you do that for me. But when we do it with servanthood, we do it from the bottom of our heart and God is still in the blessing business. Spiritual gifts, shepherding, the gift of guiding and empowering others to a faithful service. Then there is teaching, the ability to share spiritual and scriptural truths with others in a transforming way. When you teach the word of God, it has power to transform lives. Then there is wisdom, the gift of translating life experiences into spiritual truth and enabling others to apply such wisdom. I don't want to be able to just have a head knowledge, but I want to be able to teach and to share and to in, to apply wisdom. God has given so many people the gifts to be able to share with others. We can't keep our gifts to ourselves. We must share the gift. Maybe you had 
uh, an experience like I've had before. I purchased a gift for someone and I forgot to give it to them. When God gives you a gift, he doesn't want you to keep it to yourself. He wants you to give it to somebody else. And when the person receives the gift, they are blessed by the gift. This is the good news. You have gifts, but you have to receive the gift from the giver who is Jesus Christ. So you're saying, what is my purpose in life? Spiritual gifts will share with you your purpose in life. Then there is the interpretation of tongues, the ability to understand and translate the gospel when it is communicated in a foreign language. Now, friends, I may not have the gift of tongues. I may not be able to speak different languages, but I had a beautiful experience in Peru. And another uh, man of God, I was preaching and the person translated everything and we saw precious lives get baptized. It just reminds me of Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3. When you see the manifestation, the open display that people came from different walks of life. They heard the word of God in their language and was baptized. Spiritual gifts. Let me just share with you this very quickly. When you look at spiritual gifts, we can put them in a cluster. One could be nurturing, the other one could be witnessing, the other one could be outreach, and the other one could be organizing. So let's take a look. This is how it would look. The nurturing gifts is wisdom and shepherding and exhortation and helping and discernment and faith and compassion. It is for the nurturing congregation. The nurturing congregation is visible. Visiting. They're in small groups just like you are now and you care for one another. Then we have outreach, apostleship, evangelism, working miracles, compassion, healing, servanthood and prophecy. When we're dealing with outreach congregations, we tend to be missional in nature, serving the community. And when we serve the community, we are meeting the needs of the people around us. Then, my friends, there is witnessing. I like to say that we're all called to witness. We're all called to be a beacon of light, knowledge and faith and prophecy and teaching and evangelism and exhortation and healing. When I look at the witnessing gift, the congregation tends to emphasize on worship, Christian education, faith is central and extremely important to their relationship with God. Then, friends, as we continue to look at our organizational gifts, it is knowledge and giving and leadership and administration and helping and teaching and wisdom. An organizational congregation tends to be highly structured, very organized and program rich. Well, when you look at all four of these, you will note that the church is made up of all types of people with all types of spiritual gifts, but it is to do a great work for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles with you, go to Ephesians with me, chapter 4 and verse 12. Ephesians 4 and verse 12 says this, and when I look at spiritual gifts, it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. When I know that spiritual gifts is to build up the body of Christ, tear the devil's kingdom down. I want to be able to be in line with the sweet Holy Spirit working under the anointing of the gift that God has given me. Now, years ago, I had the opportunity to pastor a church. And while pastoring this church, people said, oh, I think this person will be good in this or this person will be good in that. My question was, has the person taken a spiritual gifts assessment? My same question to you today. If you have not taken the spiritual gift assessment, please go online. I place it on the screen and take the spiritual gifts assessment. See where your gifts lie and work for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you work for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be fulfilled. 
people will be blessed. You will feel like you're doing a great service for Jesus soon coming. Let us work in our spiritual gift and may God bless us as we do ministry in these last days. I love you, but God loves you best.